In this video, I'm gonna go over how we made this chicken plaque, and it's just a little detail that we're adding to the coops. And uh, I thought it'd be a fun video to kind of show you how this is done. All right, first thing that's required for this project is to do a CAD drawing or create a drawing, uh, have an idea what you wanna make. And I've already done that, and I've got the tools programmed, and we're gonna cut it on a CNC router. The next is we need the media that we'll be cutting, and I'm gonna go ahead and cast a urethane block, and for that, we need to build a box. In these containers, I have a two-stage urethane, so there's an A and a B, and when you mix them together, they're gonna to cure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up the cups to the right proportion, and we're gonna uh, start the process here. So you can see we have the A and the B here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of fly ash to each one, and I'm doing this because I feel like the fly ash makes it, it, makes it a little more airy, and it makes this easier to machine. And it's also, uh, it's the way I like to do it. That's what I'm doing. Okay, the next step is we're gonna mix the A and the B now that the fly ash is blended into the two mixes. It's gonna have a five minute cure time where it won't be workable anymore. So I'm gonna work quickly by mixing it in with the drill and then we've already leveled the box so we just have to fill the cavity. So here you know, all you have to do is you mix the two together. Give it a blend. Alright, now we let that cure. So here's our uh, part after it's been cured, and this is the media that we're going to cut to create the tool, or the model to create the tool off of. So we need to create a model, then we're going to cast a tool, and then we're going to have a mold that we can actually make a finished part with. So Folds it down to the CNC and start cutting. Now that the mold is done, I'm going to look it over for any imperfections that I don't like, such as in the S here needs to be cleaned up, and a few other of the letters just have a little bit of webbing in it because I don't want to go with anything smaller than a 1 16th cutter because um, I've got enough detail here. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up with my X-Acto knife set and then we're going to pour some silicone. Now that we have the, uh, the actual machining part done, we've re-leveled the model on the table here. And what we're getting ready to do is we're gonna make a silicone mold. We use this Mold Max 40. 40 is gonna be, I think, the durometer of the rubber, if I remember right. We've measured it out. Uh, we have the hardener in here, you can see. Now all we have to do is thoroughly mix it, and then we're gonna put it under vacuum, and that's gonna release all the bubbles from there, and we're gonna get a quality mold out of the deal. So let me go ahead and mix this. You gotta mix this real thoroughly. We're just gonna go drop it in this homemade vacuum chamber here that my dad made a long time ago when he was making prototype molds for something. It's got a clear lid, it's kind of fogged out, but you should be able to see the bubbles expand under vacuum and then escape. You already see it kind of bubbling in there. It works pretty quick. So I don't know. Basically the bubbles are gonna expand and pop on the surface and we're gonna have a solid mass to pour of it. Now that we have the mixture all mixed up, we're ready to apply it to the tool or to the model and make the tool. What you wanna do is you wanna probably 
pour from a corner slowly and let the mold fill by flowing over. And uh, I find that that helps reduce the amount of bubbles. I know it's tempting to pour right on the model, but that's not a good idea. So even though we vacuum de-aerated it, there is still some air in here. And if you pour it slowly like this, those bubbles tend to pop as they come over the edge of the cup. So. I know it's a little time consuming, but that's what you gotta do. Since there's a little bit extra silicone and the stuff's expensive, we're gonna go ahead and utilize some of these older molds that we designed for the coasters. Uh, we used to make coaster sets with different designs that we came up with. So here's the Motor City, and then stain them and they look like wood. So we're just gonna go ahead and utilize that and we'll end up making nice tools like this. Why waste, right? So yeah. the silicone didn't fire off right away. It was a little bit old and it's got a shelf life. So I went ahead and threw it in this old 1952 estate stove that I have. It's a little beat up right now, but it, uh, it ended up doing the job and the, it seems cured. So we're gonna go ahead and demold it. All right, so I'm pretty happy. It seems like it cured. We're gonna go ahead and lift it up. It was a little F iffy at first because it took way longer to cure than it was supposed to. So I don't know if it's gonna be like a durable mold, but hopefully we can get a few parts out of it. We have the model, we have the tool. And the tool, you know, the silicone was old, it didn't turn out perfect. You can see that there is some porosity in here, and that wasn't because of the lack of uh, de-aerating. It's because I think the viscosity was too thick on the silicone, and we had problems with curing. But I tested it, I was gonna throw this away, and my dad convinced me to pour apart. I did, and it turned out really nice. So the tool's usable, which is cool. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the silicone that, or not silicone, but urethane that we made this uh, model out of. And we're gonna mix them up here. Need a little mixing stick. Luckily on the ground here, there's probably something. This one here. It's the advantage of having a messy garage. All right, so all you gotta do is stir this up a little bit. You're gonna stir it a lot of it because everything I have is a little old. And it's also a little pricey to replace everything, so I'll deal with old. Especially when you're making chicken plaques. It's not like this is some sort of prototype aerospace part. It's a plaque for a chicken coop, so it's going to be fine. So all you do now is this is, uh, spilled a little bit that wasn't mixed up here, so hopefully that mixes. This is just pretty easy. You just pour it in. And then this is going to cure pretty quickly. There you go. And now we're just gonna let that cure. And once that's done, we're gonna paint it and it's gonna look like a cast copper, bronze, or whatever color we choose. Maybe we'll look like aluminum. We'll have to see what paint we have. It'll look awesome. Now that the urethane has cured, it's time to uh, get the fruit of our labor here, I guess, and uh, demold this part and see what happens. It's still a little flexible, but it will cure as time goes by. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna demold this. Boom. And then I'm just going to lay it on a flat surface and we'll paint it. And by the time the paint dries, this thing will be finished cured. But it looks pretty good. Not, uh, not too disappointed in it. There, now that we have two molded and painted, I had uh, like a bronze hammered paint and a gold paint, but I think a copper would look really nice on these. But it gives you the idea of what these plaques can look like. And now that we have a mold, we can pump them out like crazy and add that next professional level to the coops. And we're going to mount them just like that. And uh, when the coop is finished, people will know who it's made by. And I think it adds a nice detail.